You can love someone and still choose to say goodbye to them. You can miss a person every day and still be glad that they're no longer in your life. If somebody want to walk out of your life, let them go. Especially if you know you done done everything you can do, you done sat around and been the best man or the best woman you could be and they still want to go, let them go. Whatever they're running after, they'll see what they had in a minute, but by then it's going to be too late. Because you'll sit there and you'll go, because half these people you'll be sitting around crying about it, worry about two, three years from now, you ain't going to even remember their last name. Letting go can make you unstoppable. I know because I let go of a relationship and reclaimed my life. And I know that letting go can create the best of change for each and every one of you. Sometimes you just got to accept that certain things will never go back to how they used to be because certain people will never go back to who they used to be in your life. Sometimes you just got to wake up and realize that what you're holding on to just doesn't exist anymore. And the more you can accept what is, the less you'll be controlled by what was. You got to stop hanging on to someone who has let go of you. Stop losing yourself to someone who has already left you. Forget trying to find closure. Forget trying to find understandings to their reasons. Forget trying to see if they're happy in their new relationship. Stop focusing on them and start focusing on you. Let folks go, son. Some people come in your life for a lifetime. Some come for a season. You got to know which is which. And you're going to always mess up when you mix them uh, seasonal people up with lifetime expectations. You can't, they got people that got married with people they was only supposed to be with for a season. And they got married to people they only supposed to be with for a season and wonder why they're having so much hell in their life. They are not who you thought they were. The idea that this person was a trustworthy, faithful companion is not true. It is not true. That person does not exist. They didn't exist and they don't exist. It was in your head. It was in your head that this person was trustworthy and you, the, they were everything you wanted them to be and they were a faithful commandment. That is a lie. They are not that person. They have proved it. They have proved it by their actions. So move on and at the risk of sounding callous, get over it. Listen, I put everybody coming in my life in the category of a tree. Some people are like leaves on a tree. The wind blow, they over here. They unstable. They blow the other way, they over here. Ain't nothing. Season change, they wither and die. They gone. It's all right. That's some people. Most people in the world are like that. They just there to take from the tree. They ain't, they ain't there to do nothing but take and give shade every now and then. That's all they can do. But don't get, don't get mad at people like that. That's who they are. They ain't going to never be nothing. That's what they put on this earth to be, but be what they are, a leaf. Some people are like a branch on that tree. You got to be careful with them branches, too, because they'll fool you. They'll get there and make you think they're a good friend and they're real strong, but the minute you step out there on them, they'll break and leave you high and dry. But if you find you two or three people in your life that's like the roots at the bottom of that tree, you are blessed, because that's them the kind of people that ain't going nowhere. They ain't worried about being seen. Don't nobody have to know that they know you. They ain't got to know what they're doing for you, but if them roots wasn't there, that tree couldn't live. You understand? And, and, and they ain't got a whole, a tree can have a hundred million branches, but only a few roots down at the bottom to make sure it get everything it need. You got, I'm telling you something. When you get you some roots, hold on to them, but the rest of them, let it go. Just let it go. Let folks go. It's okay to be alone. Some people get freaked out when they're alone. It's okay to be alone. It's okay. It's okay to be alone. There's no big deal. Enjoy it. Do something productive. And build that trust up in yourself. You know, look back at the situation, learn from it. We do that. It's an op post operational debrief. Oh, you've put too much trust in somebody? Cool. They broke your heart? All right, roger that. Let's see. What were the steps? What should I have recognized? How many times did I say, well, you know, they didn't call me, but it's probably just because their phone was out of battery. No. <laughs> once your phone runs out of battery once, okay, you don't let it happen again, right? Yeah. So you start seeing those red flags, see the mistakes that you made. And then look for them next time around. Because you deal with people all the time that they, they made mistakes the first run, 
They go back and they make the same mistakes the second run. They go back and make the same mistakes the third run. That's when you got to start blaming yourself. Yeah. On your situation. That's why that's why I said you got to like build a relationship with yourself. You got to learn yourself. You got to trust. You got to learn to trust yourself. When you get to a point in your life where you look at people and you go, "Okay, wait a minute. You are me. You will make a decision." Cuz when you telling folks to do something and I I never throw nobody where I've never in my life just thrown nobody would just say, "Look, don't bother me no more. Don't talk to me. No, I've never done it." What I do is I tell you, say, "Look, this thing you doing right here, that's going to cause a problem. You need to fix that cuz if we're going to be friends, we're going to be cool, you got to fix that. And if you don't, we're going to have an issue." If you see somebody fix it or they even trying to fix it, that's somebody that care. Keep them people around. That's a leaf that's trying to grow up and be something else. You understand? But if you tell somebody that what you doing is hurting me and I need you to stop it and they keep doing it, they don't care. Move on. Let them go. No matter how much it hurts, let them go. And it'll get easy. I promise you every day it'll get easier and easier and easier. You just got to make it through. You hear me, Sonny? And see if you got to learn how to be by yourself, Sonny. People have to learn how to be alone. I don't understand all these people. Oh, I need somebody. Lord, where's my man? Lord, where's my woman? That is crazy as hell. If you don't know how to be by yourself, what you gonna do with somebody else? Moving on is less about what you're moving on to and more about what you're moving on from. Okay? It is less about what you're moving on to. Some of us, we stay stagnant. We settle for less. We stay in a situation that isn't good for our life. We stay in a job. We stay in a relationship. We stay in a friendship. We stay in a partnership that isn't good for our life because we don't know what we're going to move on to. We're so afraid to be alone. We're so afraid to go on that journey without because a lot of us, that's all that we know. We've been codependent on that situation. For me, I was codependent on football. There's relationships in my past that I was codependent on, and I would rather settle for a little bit and settle for less than actually move on with my life. Some of us were so afraid to be alone. We're so afraid to go along that we will stay stuck in a situation that we know isn't good for our life. So everybody type this in the chat right now so I know that you get it. Moving on is less about what you're moving on to and more about what you're moving on from. Why am I holding on to this? How is this serving me? And really think about the answer. Maybe it makes you feel validated. Maybe it makes you feel righteous. Or maybe taking on the pain is your way of recognizing the injustice so that even though it won't be made right, it can at least not be forgotten. Then I ask you, again, ask yourself, do you want to be right or do you want peace? Woo! This was huge for me. The unfortunate fact is that having both may not be possible. And also, you may never get your moment of righteousness, so why wait for it? Choose peace. What I know for sure is that in this world, time is a moving on, and it's our most valuable commodity. You can never get it back. So staying in that loop, playing it over and over in your head of hurt only amplifies your pain. Let it go. Exhale, make room in your heart for something that is uplifting. Surround yourself with people who want the best for you. You have the ability to shift the DNA of your spirit and control how you perceive life. So why not lighten your load and let it go? People who love you don't treat you badly. Love doesn't hurt. It's supposed to feel good. Ladies, take the blame off yourself. Men are really, really good at that. Making you think something wrong with you. Oh, real men don't really operate like that. But you got so many men out here from these broken homes. You got so many men out here that ain't had a father figure. That didn't tell them what real men really do. That real men buckle down. That real men meet a woman and put her on a pedestal and treat her like a queen. Real men get taught this. When you don't have a man that's been taught that, you're dealing with a man that don't have all the qualities of manhood. I just wanted to highlight that abuse is unacceptable. And I lived it for 10 years with my abuser, my then husband. And it's something that I felt very ashamed about. And when you're in an abusive relationship, you don't 
want anybody to know that. It's very embarrassing and you feel very riddled with shame and guilt. And when I left my abuser, I was, I was wanting to speak about it loud and proud, like this is not okay. And I'm one of the lucky ones I got out. And it took me 10 years to find the courage to actually leave that behind. If you don't get the lesson, it's a benevolent universe. It will come back wearing a different <laughs> pair of pants in a different form. It will show up again to see if you really yes. got it. So what is the great lesson for us? I mean, it really is what Oprah's saying, which is that when you get a red flag or a, I say, a caution, a yellow blinking light, don't let it go to red. <laughs> get it when it's yellow, when the caution is, is there that's saying something doesn't feel right. Check in with your friend. Ask them what they think about who you're with. And I'll tell you something, we don't want to do that. We don't want to ask our friends. And I always say this, if you can't, if you're living a life and having a relationship that you can't tell your friends about what's happening in your relationship, something's wrong. If you've got to keep the secret, something's wrong. It means because I don't want you to know that he's calling me a bee. He doesn't really mean that. He only does that when he drinks too much. Mm -hmm. um, he's not really an alcoholic. That only is because he was stressed last week. Well, last week turns into every kind of day. So part of it is, again, gathering a community, and I call it a truth commission. I have a truth commission in my life. Folks who will tell me the truth even when I don't want to hear it. And we all need that. Yeah. Yeah, I have it too. You know, we need somebody who will say, you know what, that is like not, I mean, I, I have you're it. out of your mind right I now. If you've been in a relationship for 12 bad years, do you want to do 12 more? Stop collecting red flags. What y'all saving them for? Once you get so many red flags, y'all ought to sew them all together, tie them around your neck and fly your ass out of there. <laughs> Think of all the times you let a man treat you badly or someone, your friends, walk all over you. How many times have you let hurtful words or criticism crush you? Well, I was uh, one of those people who was raised not to have a lot of self-esteem. Uh, and I know anybody else who was physically uh, violated as a child, as I was, uh, got whippings every day. The lesson of a whipping, the lesson of being heavily disciplined with violence is that you're not worthy, that you're not good enough. And so it takes a long time to get a sense of self-worth and self-value. And so I was in my 20s doing what everybody in their 20s does and looking for love in all the wrong places and looking to be validated by somebody else's view of who I was and wanting them to say, I'm okay, I'm okay. Yes, you're okay, you're, you're okay. And I've done some really embarrassing, ridiculous, crazy ass things over the years, holding onto the bumper of a Datsun Z like I could actually keep him from pulling off. And I. I remember one time he had left and slammed the door on my hand and I had, just like a lot of women, had the barrier of, well, you, you can say anything to me, but you cannot hit me. You cannot hit me. He didn't hit me, but the door slammed on my hand and I thought, well, that's coming close. That's coming very close. And I remember the door slamming on my hand, falling to the floor, and in front of me was a mirror and I saw myself on the floor. 
with my hand now bruised and thinking, I have become the woman that I watched my cousin Alice be my whole life as a kid. The only difference is that I'm battered in spirit and the next step is going to be, who knows? So lying there on the floor is the moment I made that decision that I have now become a woman that I never imagined myself to be and I got to figure out how to get myself out of this. And that was the beginning of the lesson, which is I'm hoping happens to you tonight. Frequent breakups and makeups, high highs and low lows. As tension rises, so does volatility. Tearful, frustrated fights followed by emotional makeups. Hateful and hurtful comments like, you're worthless, I'm not even sure why I'm with you. Followed quickly by apologies and promises it will never happen again. By this point, you've been so conditioned to this relationship roller coaster that you may not realize how unhealthy and maybe even dangerous your relationship has become. It can be really hard to see when unhealthy love turns towards abuse. But it's fair to say that the more of these markers your relationship might have, the more unhealthy and maybe dangerous your relationship could be. And if your instinct is to break up and leave, which is advice so many of us give our friends when they're in unhealthy relationships, that's not always the best advice. Time of breakup can be a real... trigger for violence. If you fear you might be headed towards abuse or in abuse, you need to consult with experts to get the advice on how to leave safely. But it's not just about romantic relationships and it's not just about violence. Understanding the signs of unhealthy love can help you audit and understand nearly every relationship in your life. For the first time, you might understand why you're disappointed in a friendship or why every interaction with a certain family member leaves you discouraged and anxious. You might even begin to see how your own intensity and jealousy is causing problems with colleagues at work. Understanding is the first step to improving. And while you can't make every unhealthy relationship healthy, some you're going to have to leave behind. You can do your part every day to do relationships better. And here's the exciting news. It's actually not rocket science. Open communication, mutual respect, kindness, patience, we can practice these things every day. And while practice will definitely make you better, I have to promise you it's also not going to make you perfect. I do this for a living. Every day I think and talk about healthy relationships, and still I do unhealthy things. Just the other day as I was trying to shuttle my four kids out the door amidst quarreling, squabbling, and complaints about breakfast, I completely lost it. 
With an intentionally angry edge, I screamed, everybody just shut up and do what I say. You are the worst. I'm going to take away screen time and dessert and anything else you could possibly ever enjoy in life. Anybody been there? Volatility. Belittling. My oldest son turned around and looked at me and said, Mom, that's not love. (laughs) For a minute, I really wanted to kill him for calling me out, trust me. But then I gathered myself and I thought, you know what, I'm actually proud. I'm proud that he has a language to make me pause. I want all of my kids to understand what the bar should be for how they're treated and to have a language and a voice to use when that bar is not met versus just accepting it. If you're going to be successful in life, you got to understand that there is a sense of urgency, that there are only 86,400 seconds in a day, and you got to not only operate in them, you got to do it quick, you got to do it fast, you got to do it in a hurry. Why? Because there's somebody else who's on the same track you on, somebody else, they're on the same path that you on. It's somebody else just like you trying to do it, and sometimes they're working just as hard as you're working. They're putting in just as much sweat, just as much tears, just as much blood, but you just got to do it what? You got to do it faster than they do it. You got to do it quicker than they do it. You have greatness within you. You have the ability to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. See, I believe that anybody through observation and practice can perform at the level of excellence. But when you're pursuing your greatness, you don't know what your limits are and you act like you don't have any. So I say to you, you have something special. You have greatness within you. That's why I wake up at three o'clock in the morning because if you're getting up at six, you might be smarter than me. You hear me? You might. You might have more privilege than me. You might. You might have more resources than me. You might. But I'm gonna get up earlier than you and I'm gonna do it quicker than you do it. I'm gonna do it faster than you do it. So by the time you get up with all your resources, by the time you get up with all your privilege, by the time you get up with all your stuff, I've already finished the race. Are you hearing me? It's not just about finishing. Sometimes it's about finishing fast and you don't have as much time as you think you have. And so you got to pick up the pace. Pick up the pace. You walking too slow. Pick up the pace. You moving too slow. Pick up the pace. If you want to finish sometime, you can't just finish. You got to finish fast. I refuse to die an unlived life. Your dreams, your goals, your passions will not just happen to you. You have to live it out. You have to grind it out. You have to work it out. You're different. You're one of the ones that'll get down dirty in the mud to fight for your dreams. It's not what you don't have. See, I was focused on what I didn't have. Don't have a college degree, don't have any credentials, never worked for a major corporation. I was focused on the negative things. I said, negative things are the things that you see when you're not focused on your goal. What do you come with? What is it that you have within you? When a dream is big enough, the odds don't matter. Look at a man the way that he is. He only becomes worse. But look at him as if he were what he could be. Then he becomes what he should be. I want to challenge you right now about raising your goals and stretch yourself. 